For what purpose does the gentleman from California? Oh, there. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, today 22 members of the House have banded together to create a safe climate caucus to end the conspiracy of silence in this House of Representatives about the dangers of climate change and the Republican denial of its existence and their rejection of the science. We're committing to talk every single day on the House floor about the urgent need to address climate change. President Obama is leading the way. He says we must respond to climate change because to do otherwise would be to betray our children and future generations. We're ready to get to work. We understand the threat facing our children, and we know our nation has the know-how and the ingenuity to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. But to do so, we must act now. For what, pur what purpose does the gentlelady from California rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to join my colleagues in addressing the immediate and increasing threat of climate change. States and localities are beginning to respond to this threat, but they can't do it alone. And that's why I'm introducing two bills to help our communities to prepare for the future impacts of climate change. First is the Coastal States Climate Change Planning Act, and it provides funding to coastal states and communities so they can plan and implement climate change mitigation projects such as seawalls, habitat buffer zones, and flood control systems. And the second bill is the Water Infrastructure Resiliency and Sustainability Act, which provides funding for local water agencies. Water agencies are very concerned about the need to increase resiliency of our aging water infrastructure systems because they're going to be impacted by climate change. These critical infrastructure projects will not only improve public health and safety, but they'll also help our economy, local economies grow by providing jobs. Mr. Speaker, it is time to take action on climate change. So I hope we can work together to pass these and other common sense measures to address such a critical issue. And I yield back my time. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California arise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For far too long, our country has ignored the blatant warning signals that climate change is real and its effects are happening all around us, from droughts to wildfires to extreme flooding. The time to act is now. Numerous reports indicate that we are dangerously close to losing the window of opportunity in which we can meaningfully address climate change. My district of Sacramento has already been working hard to implement common sense policies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. By developing cutting edge clean energy technology and creating energy retrofit programs, my constituents understand the urgent need to tackle this issue head on. Now is the time for Congress to follow their lead and show that we too are committed to mitigating and reversing the devastating effects of climate change. Failure to heed new warnings and take action will have drastic economic and environmental effects, not just for our generation, but for our children and grandchildren. The time to act is now. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Missouri arise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to call on my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to help our communities deal with changing climate. In the last two years alone, our country has dealt with destructive wildfires in the west, flooding on the Missouri and Mississippi rivers, a devastating hurricane in the northeast, and the worst drought since the Dust Bowl. Climate change preparation and adaptation is about risk management. As Ben Franklin said, an ounce of provision, prevention is worth a pound of cure. Spending a small amount now saves as much suffering and spending uh, much suffering. And if we understand, this is going to happen again and again. Because climate change is real, we are going to address this over and over and over again on this floor. 
And some people might say that there is no such thing as climate change. Well, you can say that water is not wet, but it doesn't make it so. I yield back. What purpose does the gentleman from California arise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored to represent the Second District of California, which spans from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Oregon border. Mine is a district with hundreds of miles of pristine coastline with numerous rivers and cold water fisheries, with, a, uh, with ancient forests and redwood trees, with cities located right up against San Francisco Bay. It's a district where unique climatic factors have combined to create some of the world's greatest wine appellations. And we know in the Second District of California that we cannot wait to address the threat of climate change. On the state level, I have fought to defend and successfully implement California's world-leading greenhouse gas reduction law for the past six years, but that is not enough. We need leadership here at the federal level. If we fail to act, Mr. Speaker, the livelihoods of fishermen, crabbers, foresters, farmers, and others in my district are going to suffer great harm. The cost of Congress continuing to bury its head on the issue of climate change is simply too great. And so I am proud to be joining other colleagues with Chairman Waxman in the Safe Climate Caucus and to take this cause to the national level. I yield back.